How do you make a sequel to a show like The Eccentric Family? Sure, you can take its blend of Japanese folklore, modern family politics, and that beautiful animation, and just do the same thing all over again. Or you could take all those elements and go bigger, with crazier creatures, bigger stakes, and more action scenes, kind of the Hollywood formula. But repeating season one would negate the accomplishments of the characters in season one, and bigger stakes would really undermine that back alley, quiet feel of the show. Are those really the only options? Thankfully, in 2017, series director Masayuki Yoshihara didn't do either of those things. Season 2 introduces some new characters and builds on the plot of Season 1, giving the cast new challenges and different stakes instead of simply bigger ones. So on the one hand, if you're a fan of the first season's tone, you can rest easy. This still feels like the same show. It's also legitimately the next chapter in the story, and well, without spoiling it, it deals with certain existing characters as well. It's actually one of the things I really like about season two. We explore why certain characters act the way they do, and by the end, they've almost all gone through some serious changes. Further, several side plots that are just mentioned in season one are actually explored in more depth here, and in some cases, they do actually progress to a new place by the end of the season. And all those characters continue to act and speak distinctively, each with his or her own rhythm and style. It's really impressive writing here. You could just read the lines of the script and know exactly who that was supposed to be talking. It's really cool. And thankfully, somehow, the show retains that fluidity of motion and clarity of action that was a hallmark of season one. It also introduces new environments where action scenes take place, some of them focusing on transformation and others on actual combat this time around. Now, this is not a traditional shonen show by any stretch, but it's still fun to see the animators take on more traditional face-to-face -face combat at times instead of making everything about transformation and sneaking around. This does add a bit of a problem to some extent. The action scenes sometimes grow so big in scale that it's hard to believe no humans are actually noticing. Now, I know the show's established that humans ignore anything that doesn't fit into their preconceptions, but it's hard to believe some of these big action set pieces, humans are just completely ignoring and shrugging it off, but maybe that's just me. There are also a few plot twists in here that I personally felt they just didn't work for me, although the large majority worked well. But since we can't talk about spoilers on the internet, I'll make another video about that and mark it spoilery. Honestly though, these are trivial issues in a series that does so many things right. That folklore is there, and it goes even deeper. All the wonderfully realistic neighborhood politics are there, and oh man, that animation is just gorgeous. Unfortunately, they've now adapted both books in the original series, so there's nothing more to adapt. This is probably all we'll ever get. Sayonara, eccentric family. You're like no other.